Welcome back to NATS, the Connective Technology, and this is part eight. And today we're going to be talking about Jetstream. Jetstream is a feature that has been added to NATS and it provides you a ton of capabilities and bring a lot of new things that NAT Core doesn't have, which so far we've been using is Core NAT. So more about Jetstream in this video. So let's jump in. So what is Jetstream? So according to the description on the NATS documentation page, I'll just read what it says and then we'll sort of break it down. It says NATS has a built-in distributed persistent system called Jetstream, which enables new functionality and higher quality of service on top of the base core NATS functionalities and quality of service. So if we take that apart, what we've been doing so far with being able to have clients subscribe for to a topic for messages and clients publish messages to a subject, that is the core NATS functionality. And there we started to, oh, there's no way to really save your messages at all. All you can do is send a message, hope that someone is out there listening to it. And if you really want to make sure at all it was received, you can do a request, but that request can still time out. So other than that, you know, I mean, sure, you can wait for hours, but there's no way for a publisher to just start a send message and just assume that it's being saved by NATS and therefore clients can get it later on. And that's the kind of thing that Jetstream, get, Jetstream gives us. So not only is it persistence where you can save messages, but it's distributed and it's built in. So you don't have to do any addition or add something else on top of NATS. Now we know what uh, Jetstream is. It's given NATS the ability to persist messages and it can do it distributedly. So what does this Jetstream really enable? It says allows you to do streaming. So what this refers to is temporal decoupling. Temporal meaning time, which means that before with Core NAT, if a, subs a publisher is sending messages, a subscriber essentially has to be online at the same time to get those messages. So let's think about an application in which you might have clients and those clients are on an uh, unreliable network. And so they can connect and then maybe um, something with the network, they disconnect or maybe they go offline for a little bit. Maybe it's a mobile type thing or IoT type device. And so if messages are being published that they're interested in, they wouldn't get those messages if they're offline because one, that's when core NATS wouldn't save it. That's one who will answer it. And two, even if the publisher say, I want a reply, right? You know, send a request message to say, I want a reply to this request. What's going to happen? Well, those clients are offline. How long should the publisher wait? And so that would be a really good way to build a system because the, this is not deterministic in terms of knowing how long or if the client is even going to come back or when it's going to come back. So you don't want to reply, you don't want to depend on reply slash request messages to solve this sort of problem. What you want is to decouple the publisher and the uh, subscribers being online at the same time. So you want to decouple that time dependency that they have. So this is called temporal or essentially think of time decoupling. And so what you see here, and this is all taken from the NAS documentation, which I'll link to and in the description below, and you should absolutely go read all of it yourself. Um, but other systems or, you know, messaging platforms like um, RabbitMQ, um, Kafka and all these things, they solve this problem of decoupling the publishers and the subscriber in time by using a durable consumer, and we'll see what a durable consumer is, or by using queues. And NAS, as you saw before, when we use queues, was really for distributed load. When we, in core NATS, when we set out, we have multiple cons subscribers to the same queue, it simply means that our NATS should take a message and send it to one or the other, one of the um, subscriber that's in that same queue. 
but that's for distributing the load. It wasn't used for um, the fact that though they can be decoupled in time. Okay. But other systems generally use queues as a way of saying, okay, put messages in the queues. They wait there until a client comes around to get it. And that doesn't use queues that way. And durable consumer is where um, other system would say, well, okay, um, this consumer needs to be able to get these messages and I'm going to keep the messages until this consumer can pick it up. And NAS does have a feature like this, to a consumer, but you will see how it's used later. So how then does NAS do streaming? It does have the ability to stream with Jetstream because it is saving messages, but it's not going to use durable consumer and it's not going to use queues for streaming. Instead, NAS simply save your messages into what it calls a stream. And we'll see just now what a stream is exactly and how that differs. Once we use in a stream, we can do all the durable and queue stuff. Now, Jetstream allows us, since we can save messages to a stream, or persist messages rather, we can build on top of it um, key value store, which is similar to what you have in Redis. And you can also do document store, like what's similar to S3. Not only do you have uh, the ability to save messages into a stream, and we'll see all the benefits of streams in a bit, but you also um, have the ability with Jetstream to do key value store because NATS extended the ability of, um, uh, of streaming to now say, well, messages can be stored in stream, well, why don't we do key value store also? And they reuse the ability of streams to do key value store. And we'll see that when we cover key value store. And then document store, well, where's document store? Imagine that oh, you have some documents like you know files, like let's say movies or something or videos, and you want to be able to share that in a distributed manner, right? Maybe you want to build something like Netflix, for example, where you can um, put in there a movie and then have it stream to multiple consumers. Because when you send a message, and you have multiple subscribers to NAT, that's what they're doing. They're getting a copy of the same message. Well, if it's a document, well, they're getting a copy of the document, right? So you can have that store there. And instead of the document going away, like what would happen without the jet stream, now it can be stored there so that consumers can come repeatedly over time and just read the same document. So we'll talk more about that later. So in this video, We'll learn about streaming and then leave key value and documents for another video. So what is a stream? A stream captures and store messages, right? But which message does it store? Well, it captures and store messages published to one or more subjects. The subjects don't have to be related in any way. So you can have a stream with subjects with messages from um, being published to let's say a subject, let's say I can create a stream with messages from orders and from, let's say, um, shipment. Two different subjects, I can have those messages be in the same stream. The other thing is that NAT client can consume messages from the stream. So, so far, our clients were consuming messages from the subject, again, which means that, and of course, a client could subscribe to multiple subjects. But the difference here is that instead of having multiple subscription there for multiple subjects, a client can essentially subscribe to one stream. And if that stream is storing messages or receiving messages from multiple subjects, then the client automatically get all those messages. And we'll see that in a bit, right? So the second bullet point here is that client can consume messages from the stream at any time. And this is where that temporal decoupling occurs, right? Because since the messages are stored in the stream, when the publisher publishes messages, it doesn't know anything about Jetstream. It doesn't know anything about the stream. It's just publishing messages to the subject like it's always been doing. Nothing changes there. It's just that now we tell Nats, well, hey, when you see messages occur on this subject, I want you to put them in this stream. And then now Nats persists the messages that way. And later on, Clients can come and choose whether they want to consume messages from the subject as they were doing before. Again, now relying on the fact that they must be online to get the messages that are published now, 
or they can go to the stream and get messages that were published before. And of course, they can get live messages too, as we'll see. So that doesn't go away. When we say a client is subscribed to a stream, we can call it a just stream customer, or sometimes I'll just simply use a, say, a customer, right? It's nothing different than what we had before. It's just a subscriber, but just happens to subscribe into a stream instead of subscribing to a subject. Now, as I said before, a consumer, right, of a, of a client that's consuming messages from a stream can replay or consume those messages in the entire stream. And they can choose how they want to have those messages sent to them from that. Let's go back to my previous example. Let's say I had a client that was um, that always can disconnect from the network or from disconnect from um, NATS every night, you know, for a couple of hours because of whatever reason, right? It needs to go to sleep, whatever. And messages came in that that client would otherwise need to process. Since the client is not online, it would not get those messages. And the publisher wouldn't be able to wait long enough for the client to be online to then send the messages. So by creating a stream for the subjects that that client would be interested in, the publisher can continue to work as before, publishing messages whenever it wants, even when the client is offline. And when the client comes back online, it can then connect to the stream and say, hey, give me all the messages that are in the stream from the very beginning, or give me the messages from the time when I last connected, right? And this is where that durable consumer uh, comes in as we will see uh, much later, not today, but when we talk again in the next video, you'll see how durable consum consumer allow a consumer to connect to the stream and say, hey, just give me a message from the last time I was here, I, I connected, okay? Basically new messages, right? Um, so these are the capabilities that the streams allow and any client can choose to pick from wherever they want to start from. So some of the features of a stream are the replay policies. So replay policy refer to the fact of how do customers get the message, right? How and when. And um, that's here gives you a lot of possibilities. Now retention policy. This refers to how long NAT should keep messages. Remember it's storing messages. How long should we keep them before we have to discard, discard them? And there are different policies for things like limits, right? Like um, limit the age of a message, like get rid of messages after I've had it for so long. Get rid of messages after I've had so many number of messages. Get rid of messages if the stream reaches a certain size. Like, you know, I only want to store 10 gigs of stuff in the stream. If for whatever reason the stream is getting more than that, then start getting rid of messages. And of course, once we say get rid of message, how should we get, which one should we get rid of? Should we get rid of the old one or should we get rid of new ones? Um, what about if I only want to store message, a certain number of messages? I only want a total of 10,000 messages, period, in the stream. Um, so that's going to be like how many messages to store in the stream or per topic. And then also, like, should I keep messages wrong if nobody's ever going to be interested in it? Or should I keep messages wrong so long as they're consumers who need it. And so this would refer to that durable thing that we talk about. Like, let's say I have a client who connected and said, basically, remember me. I remember the messages that I've consumed already. So when I come back to you, you can just give me the new messages. And so if I'm offline for two years, should not try and keep those messages until I come back. And for how long should it really try to keep it? Right. So these are all different ways um, in which Nats can retain um, messages. And also, so if we're doing a work queue, remember, NAT uses queue for distributing load. So if messages are going to go into a work queue, it therefore means that once a message is consumed from this queue by one of the clients or subscriber, right, or the consumer, if this is a work queue, the work is finished. So we shouldn't keep this message around anymore, right? Because we don't want the work to be done yet again, right? So think of, let's say, we were receiving, um, we were running like a, a construction business or a handyman business and people were sending in requests to, you know, fix a leaky pipe, you know, fix some stairs, fix a wall, fix an outlet, that sort of thing. 
and we're creating work, right? Work orders, and we're putting them into NATS, and it's going into our work queue. Well, as we want it to be safe because we want to make sure that somebody does, does the work, right? We don't want to send it out and there's nobody there to do the work and then it just disappeared. That would be core NATS. We don't want that. So we tend to use a stream to capture where we publish work orders onto some subject. We want it to go into a stream and be saved there. But now we want that once somebody picks up that work, it, that message is removed. Because if somebody picks up the work to go fix a leaky pipe, then they already taken that work. So it should be removed from the queue. No other workman should come back and see it how there's still a leaky pipe to be fixed. At least not the same one because it's a work queue. Another thing that the stream provides is the ability to store. That's like the core um, feature of a stream is persisting messages. So that's the do storage. But also, as we saw before, you can do things like key value store and document store. So, and that's because a stream can just store things. And there are many other features that stream provides, but we're not going to cover them all in this video or while we're looking at NATS. But just know it though, there are many more out there and definitely when you read the documentation, you'll see. Now, let's talk a little bit about um, the consumer replay policies. Remember we talked about how once you have messages in a stream, consumers can connect to that stream and start replaying the messages in that stream. So here are some little bit more details on diff different ways consumers can replay the messages in the stream. When a consumer connects to a stream, it can say, give me all the messages that are currently in the stream. And Nats can try to push those messages as fast as it can, not as fast as it can, as fast as the consumer can handle it to the consumer. So that's instant, which is here are all the messages. There's this first message, the second message, blah, blah. And as the consumer gets a message, work on it and go back to that, it gets another message, blah, 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 right? Or it can do original, which is it delivers the messages at the same rate at which they were published. So that is really interesting because you can do all kinds of interesting things that you weren't capable of doing before. This sort of ability to replay messages at the rate of which are published, I don't know of any other system, messaging system that has this. And it's going to allow you to solve some really interesting problem or even to when you try to reproduce a problem, um, just be able to do um, to see how the problem may have arise because you're able to replay the message in exactly the same order and at the rate at which they were originally published. The other thing you can do is say, I want the last message that was sent to the stream. And again, this could be the last message that entered the stream regardless of which subject it came from. Or I want the last message that was sent to the stream for a specific subject. Remember, for a stream, NATS, um, can, a stream can save or persist messages from multiple subjects. So you do have an option when you try to consume, whether you're trying to consume across all the subjects in that stream or just some specific ones. You can also save from a very specific sequence number. So the messages in the stream are numbered from one or being the first one until whatever, right? And so you can say, give me from the fifth message forward because I'm not interested in the first four messages. Or I, I want to get from message 1000 forward, right? Or I just want to get message 1000 only. You can ask for essentially a window of messages. So start from a specific number and come to the very last one or just start from a specific number and give me a, a fixed number. Or you can ask for a very specific place in time. So these messages are being stored in the stream with information about when they arrive. Hence, why not can replay them at the rate that they were published. But now you can request, let's say you had an issue that was reported at 10.45 p.m. You can say, okay, let's go back and see which messages came in at 10.44, the messages that occurred just before the issue occurred and the one around the time when the issue occurred. And so that's our replay um, policy. So let's try and see how we can get a better understanding of stream by doing a simple illustration. Let's say I had three services, service one, two, and three, and I want them to communicate. So I introduced NAS, in, NAS into the picture, right? I put on a deploy NAT server, and now service one is going to be publishing messages on orders that new. So again, nothing new here. This is exactly core NAT. 
and we have service two that's going to subscribe for messages and orders that new and again core not so it's getting messages when they're published and so they're tied in time but now service two is going to do something to that message and then publish it some new message onto orders that failed so it doesn't work and publish a new thing and then service three consume from that so great there must be a line at the same time for the system to work as depicted here the only thing i could do is do request reply messages and all it does is ensure that my message was still de delivered but other than that it still means that the system must be online because when i do a request i want a reply which implies implies that the client or the thing that's replying to me must be there so how can we introduce temporal decoupling here or decouple these system from having to be online at the same time and so if we create a stream we can we give the stream a name and i'm going to call the stream here orders but it doesn't have to be called orders it could be called whatever we want and it doesn't have to be uppercase or anything there's no naming convention like that but you'll see that sometimes people just use uppercase to name streams and then the subjects that it should be concerned with are all the stream subjects that are related to orders but it could be anything else again it could be orders it could be products it could be any different subjects but in this case i'm going to say anything that have to do with orders if you see a subject and messages on that subject that matches this pattern i want you to persist it so in this case we only have two subjects that matches this pattern orders that new and orders that fail so what our stream is going to do is anytime there's a message that's published on orders that new it's going to persist it. It's going to save it, right? And so now, subscriber two can simply subscribe from this subject that's in the stream. So it's subscribing to the stream, but it's saying specifically, I want this subject, right? Because it doesn't need all the, the messages from both streams. So it's just asking for this very specific subject. What that does is now this subscriber two doesn't need to be online when those messages, those orders were published. And similarly, when it published messages, it's just publishing as before. It knows nothing about Jetstream. But subscriber three is going to be changed to say, I want to subscribe or consume messages from a stream. And specifically, I want to consume messages that um, the stream has for orders that fail. And now subscriber three can be online whenever it wants. And it doesn't have to worry because the stream is taking care of saving the messages that were published while it was offline. And this doesn't stop us, by the way, from um, continuing to use NATs the way we were using it before. Like I could still have a service S4 that subscribe to orders that new, and maybe subs the sub service S1 is doing re request reply and say, hey, I want to reply for this uh, message I'm going to send, right? Like it makes a request. And subscriber 4 is the one saying, oh, yeah, I got it. Um, so you could still be doing that. So that's just core NAT. But for service two and service three, we want to decouple them and have them be able to come online anytime and go away and so on. So we use a stream for them to be able to get their messages. Okay. Notice the publisher doesn't know anything about just stream, only the subscribers, because they have to say, where do I want to get my messages from? Do I want to get it directly from the subject or do I want to get it from a stream? And then when it says I want to get from a stream, it can say I want all the messages in the stream or I just want a specific subject that that stream knows about or the stream is saving messages for. And then, of course, the whole reply policy come into play about which set of messages and all that stuff. So with that illustration out of the way, um, I know this has been pretty long, but I just wanted to explain how you can understand this graphically, sort of with some pictures. Since this video is a bit long, I'll cut it here. And so in the next video, I'll show you how to start playing with streams. If you've made it this far and you are not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. If you watch the entire video, you probably found it useful and like the style. And if so, um, I would really appreciate you taking the time to subscribe. Um, if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Always do. I can't stop saying that because I really mean it. Um, take care, be safe, and see you in the next video soon. Bye.